What's up everybody? So today is gonna to be part two of our MIG welder series. Now, we're going to do several, several parts of this and each one of them is gonna be a small snippet so that you guys can follow along and you can learn at a relatively slow pace. Um, each video is gonna have a different technique, each video is gonna have a different piece of advice and each video is going to be a little bit more in depth than the one before. Now in our last video, we did an intro to the MIG welder itself where I showed you guys all the ins and outs of how a MIG welder works, how the machine works, what it does, and hopefully kind of dispelled a lot of the, the uncertainty of how a machine works and maybe, you know, quelled some of your fears on how a machine works to uh, hopefully get you a little bit better into it. Now, what we're going to be doing today is nothing crazy. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys basically what's going to happen when you make your first weld with a MIG machine, whether it be my Miller 211 or a Hobart or anything you pick up on Craigslist or something that you bought from Harbor Freight, it's all going to be the same. So today what we're going for basically is we're going to set the machine up. We're going to set the machine up for the thickness of metal that we're going to be welding. And I'm going to show you guys how too much wire speed can hurt, too little wire speed can hurt, too much heat can hurt and blah blah so what it'll do is it'll give you guys a good idea of where to start with things when you're first starting to mig weld and i can't say this enough i have all these little pieces here that i pick up all the time and you guys will see me welding a lot of these several times in these videos it's good to have a good chunk of scrap metal laying around because scrap metal can be your best friend when you're learning how to weld now i cut these from you know stock that I had in my inventory but you don't need to do that you can weld on old mufflers you can weld on you know old fence posts or whatever it may be whatever you can find that you can practice on do it so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with this super thin piece of metal I don't know if you could see the wall thickness on that but I think it's a hundred and twenty five thousandths wall maybe a little less maybe hundred thousandths wall so it's pretty thin stuff um, and this one, it'll allow me to show you what too much heat can do to a thin piece of metal and also what too little heat can do on a thin piece of metal. And then we'll move up to the quarter inch plate and then maybe this plate, which is quarter inch on quarter inch. And we'll go from there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually look again at our chart. Remember the welding chart that I showed you guys in the last video that basically tells you everything about your welder and its specs and how to actually utilize them well here's what we're going to do so we're going to look on here and we're going to say okay we're running at 230 volts the metal that we're going to be welding is roughly 1.2 millimeter 18 gauge somewhere in that area right around there so it's telling us that basically with solid wire 7525 mix which is what we're using gas wise we've got 30 thousandths wire if we come over to here we'll see that our setting should be 3.5 on the voltage knob and 40 on the wire speed knob so what we're going to do is come over here we're going to set the voltage knob to 3.5 and we're going to set the wire speed to 40. Now that we've got that done, remember what we said yesterday, this is literally just a short circuit machine. I've got my ground clamp attached to the table. The table is steel. We're going to put the steel on the table. And all we're going to do with this one is we're going to weld a bead right across this face right here. So you can see what that bead looks like. Now I'm going to try to talk while I'm actually doing the welding so that you guys can get an understanding of what's going on and then we'll move over to the other metals. So let me get you guys set up here and we'll go from there. All right guys, let's orient this so you can see. I'm gonna try to weld away from me here so you can kind of see what's going on. But basically what we're gonna be looking to do is we're gonna run a bead right across here. Now the motion I'm going to use, and this is gonna be different for everybody, but what I'm gonna do basically is when I start here, I'm going to weld in a C, the letter C but keep advancing as you're welding. And that will allow you to move back into the puddle a little bit, back out of the puddle, back into the puddle, back out, back in, back out. And basically what that does is it'll give you that nice 
dime pattern that everybody's always looking for. So we're gonna knock that out real quick. I don't know how good this one's gonna come out because I'm kind of welding away from me so that you guys can see it. So let's see how it goes. Actually not too shabby for having welded in the weird direction I was welding in but you can see at the very end of that weld it's sunk in so in my honest opinion this is too much heat you can kind of see how the weld started out high and started sinking lower and lower and that was even after me increasing my travel speed so you guys are gonna have to play with that I would personally turn the voltage down a little bit as well as increase my travel speed to get that bead to lay a little bit higher on top. So let's do another one. We'll decrease the voltage a little bit and we'll see how it will make out. All right, so I kicked the voltage down to 2.5, kept the wire speed roughly the same, kicked it down maybe just a hair, and we'll see how this one comes out. All right, so that one came out a little bit more the way that I like them. It's a little bit more consistent, if it'll ever focus. There we go. A Little bit more consistent height-wise. Looks a little bit better. A Little less heat went into the part. You can see the heat affected zone is actually right on the part itself and didn't go extend past it. So that's a little bit more to my liking. So again, you'll have to play with your voltage settings until you get it right. Now, let's turn it up. We're gonna turn it up to, I don't know, let's just say four or five, and we'll increase the wire speed a little bit and you'll see what happens. There you go. That is exactly what happens. So that's how you'll know that your heat is too high. Now on a scrap piece of metal, this is fine. When you get into doing something for production or a customer or for yourself that you want to come out perfect, yeah, it's gonna be a problem. So just by turning up the heat a little bit, we blew right through that. That metal is very thin. So you need to be very careful of that. So that's what can happen there. Now, let's switch up to the bigger, beefier metal. Now, this is the piece, if you remember from the last video, we did two TIG welds and a MIG weld, and a TIG weld on this side as well. We're gonna MIG this right here. Again, we're gonna look back at our chart, and we're going to see what our settings need to be for this particular size of metal. All right, so this one says that it should be at voltage six, wire speed 90. Now I know from experience that 90 is way too fast. And the, how you'll know with wire speed, whether it's too fast or too slow, is you're either going to get a sound that sounds like hissing. And we'll do that on this piece. We'll set it too slow and then we'll set it too fast. Too fast, what's gonna happen is your torch is going to push off of the material as you're welding. You'll feel it pushing back, pushing back, pushing back. That's how you know that your wire speed is too fast. The welder can't keep up with melting the wire as fast as you're trying to put it in there. If it's too slow, you're gonna hear a, a hissing sound. You're gonna lose that crackle, that sizzling bacon sound, and you're just gonna get a crackle off of it. So let's do that now. We'll set it to what the machine recommends, and then we'll set the wire speed too slow, and then we'll set it where I know it's, it's good. All right, guys, so here we go at six and 90.
guys. So I felt that pushing back. I don't know if you saw the metal was moving ever so slightly every time I welded it, but this bead is super focus. Is super, super heavy. You see how fat that bead is? And you'll also notice too, what's missing off of this? There is no heat affected zone. And I'm holding this in my hands without burning my hands. Now that can be a problem because on this side, you can see the heat marks on this piece. On this side, there are no heat marks, which usually means that the weld didn't penetrate deep enough. So now with the wire speed being so fast and the voltage being so low, we're encountering a problem where we're not gonna have penetration on this particular T-joint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it to where I know it's good, which is roughly voltage eight and a half, nine, with a wire speed of about 60. And that should give us what we're looking for. All right, so here we go with the settings I know are good. We'll weld from this weld out this way. getting hot all right so now if you'll see on that weld focus please please focus all right you'll see on that weld that that weld looks a lot flatter than that weld it also looks like it burned in better and if you can see there's a heat affected zone there there's a heat affected zone down there and again, this weld is laying way flatter than the other weld is. As you can see, it even looks like it bit in more, it's wider, looks like it ate more of the metal. That's what you wanna see. Now let's do a quick weld with the wire speed too slow. Listen for that hissing noise I was telling you about. That's the hissing noise. I'm sure you guys heard that one perfectly. Now let's hear what it should sound like. All right guys, so that's what it should sound like. If you want a quick word of advice, it should sound like a swarm of angry bees or sizzling bacon. It should not sound like it's hissing and like it's trying and trying and trying because your weld will be garbage at that point. All right guys, so those are your two most important aspects of MIG welding. Number one, voltage, according to the material you're welding material you are welding and two wire speed those two are very closely matched and you need to get them right depending on what size and thickness of metal that you're welding now you guys saw on this piece here which is actually still quite hot see that big hole we blew in there too much voltage on the piece we just got done welding you notice that you heard that hiss when the wire speed was too slow that's the wire melting before it gets a chance to go into the actual metal itself, so your weld is gonna be garbage. Wire speed too fast, it wants to push the material away, push the torch away, all kinds of stuff. So, rule of thumb, look at your machine. It's almost always gonna have recommended settings. 
If your machine doesn't have recommended settings, find online, YouTube, anywhere, Google it. Look at recommended wire feed and size settings for each thickness of metal. Gives you a good starting point, but as you guys saw, sometimes the recommendation is a little bit off based on what you're doing. Like for instance, on the quarter inch metal, it wanted me to set it at voltage six with wire speed 90. To me, that's just ridiculous. For me, setting the voltage to nine and then setting the wire speed to about 60 gives me the penetration I'm looking for. It gives me the heat affected zone I'm looking for and it gives me the weld that I'm looking for most importantly. So now that you guys are equipped with the knowledge of basic wire feed settings and basic voltage settings, you can now grab your welder, grab a couple pieces of metal, start welding on a flat piece of metal, just doing some beads like I did on this piece here. Run yourself some sample test beads and see how they look. See if you're gonna blow through the metal, see if you're not putting enough heat in the metal. Having scrap metal, like I said in the beginning of the video, is super important. So, make sure you have some scrap metal, get yourself a welder, whether it's flux core or gas, you're going to have about the same results. The flux core is a little bit dirtier of a weld and you'll have to clean it with a wire brush when you're done to see what your results are. But with gas, you won't have to do that. So you can get your cheap Harbor Freight welder, you can go down to a Hocon or Air Gas or one of those guys and get a small little CO2 argon tank for next to no money and you can start welding. So now that you guys are equipped, and I know I keep saying this, but now you're equipped with the knowledge of very basic MIG welding procedures, go get to welding. Start it out, run a few beads, see how you make out. Let me know in the comments how you made out and we'll see you on the next one, which will go a little bit more into uh, MIG welding, different types of metal joints and different wire settings and feed settings depending on joints. So we'll get there. So this was part two in the MIG series. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more of this. We're gonna pepper in some other stuff in the shop that we're doing. Um, and we'll see you probably, I would say a few days with another welding video for you. We got some really interesting stuff coming up in the future, some really cool stuff to weld coming in the future. We're gonna be breaking out the TIG welder again. So stay with me guys. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for each and every one of you. The channel's growing. I can't believe it. I love every minute of it. So thank you again. And we will see you next time. Have a good night, guys.